Hi. How you guys doing? My name's Derek. I'm gonna show you guys um, basically how I paint in Photoshop? Question mark? Kind of? Um, just like a real short video here of how I set things up. Maybe in terms of beginning to paint, maybe lighting, a little bit of that, a little touch on, on some of these things in general. Um, so here we have a canvas, right? Uh, do we have a canvas? Yes, we have a canvas. Uh, and here in this folder, I did a really quick sphere kind of thing. And this is done really simply with mainly uh, uh, brushes being large, soft, round edge brushes. Um, kind of like this one, you know? And all I'm doing is simply having a base layer right here, which is completely opaque. I made it using the marquee tool, right? You can do this and you can fill that in and there you go, you got, you got a circle. Um, and on top of these, you can see these layers right here are, I believe what they're called is clipping mask layers. Um, very useful, especially when you have something that you want to paint and not redefine the edge every time you want to uh, add a new layer or something different, reflecting light, all that stuff, right? Um, and we have the same thing for the, the cast shadow at the bottom as well. Um, so let's go through this real quick. First layer I have is a multiply layer. Usually I do start with like a drawing and you know what, we'll, we'll go through this and then we'll apply this type of technique to just a quick sketch, right? So let's do that. Um, here's a multiply layer. What's a multiply layer? A multiply layer makes anything that's underneath that layer darker in value, depending on the value that you're using uh, on, on, in the multiply layer. So in this case, if we were to turn this back to normal, this is actually just uh, kind of a, a little bit lighter than the actual local value. Local value being this. This is the average value of this particular ball, right? I don't know why I'm quoting that, but there you go. So, and when we turn this to multiply, it'll make the layers underneath this darker. And that's, this is the effect right there. Um, so that kind of creates our terminator, I guess that's what you would call it, or core shadow, which would be after the terminator. The terminator is the, the point right here where Arnold, no, where the light kind of starts to change in value. And this is reflecting light coming off of well, the bottom, the base, the butt. Because um, light is a very silly thing. It bounces all over the place, right? Reflecting, penetrating, giggity. You know, it does, it does some wacky things. So it's really, you know, doing, doing some studies. That's why doing studies from life, things that have actually existed in life, really can help you out uh, in terms of having the viewer believe you're, you're drawing more or you're painting more, right? Uh, and this is like specularities and basically the, the, the highlight, right? Where the value of the light source is lighting this, this area the brightest. So it doesn't get any brighter than that on this particular sphere. Uh, and what's on top of that? I think this is just another little small edit to the core shadow. Um, on top of this, in, entire, uh, it, which this layer isn't clipped on because we're actually, we want to be painting very subtly over here. Take a look when I'm, when I turn it on. Pretty ambient. That's a little bit of, of, I think you would call it, is it disbursement? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just making up things now. Um, so we can kind of keep these general rules in mind, you know, uh, cast shadow, I guess being one Reflective light, right there. Here, let me make it so you can see where the mouse is. Uh, reflective light, core shadow, your terminator, which I don't really think that, that matters too much. Your highlight or your specularity or whatever you want to call it. Um, diffusing, diff is that what it would be called? I don't know, whatever. Uh, so let's turn that off. And then let's jump into just a new layer. Just made a new layer, nothing crazy. And 
Let's just start drawing a... Let's draw a skull. How's that sound? A quick... I guess we'll call it a human skull. Um, and so, just like anything else, right? You just start with a, 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 a line drawing. Anything else? I guess not everything starts with a line drawing. Okay, if you're baking a cake, you don't start with a line drawing, right, Derek? Well, that's right. Um, I guess I should say, in terms of painting, you know, having a good solid drawing will really help uh, the painting in, in a lot of ways. Now, there's a lot of artists out there who don't necessarily need to uh, start with a, a line drawing, and that's totally fine. And if that works for you, then do it, you know, do it that way. Art is, uh, drawing and painting isn't meant to be done in one specific way. That How boring would that world be? Um, and I could look at this dude. I have a little uh, naked dude over here that I can look at. Just for, you know, quick reference. And again, even I'm, I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I should be using life, right? We should be using actual, I don't want, well, I, I would love to get one someday, uh, an actual skull. Um, I guess this one's still going to have like some flesh on it, it seems. I guess we can just turn this into a weird face of some sort as well. And flipping, let's flip it to see how, see how that leans? Do you guys see that? Kind of leans a bit? That's something that always happens uh, to me. Well, it doesn't always happen, but quite often enough. And it's because I get a little bit used to, I think I position my head to the left of things too. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but usually have something on an angle somewhere when I'm painting or drawing. But it's something that you should be aware of. It's the same as like, uh, I don't know if back in like high school or if you guys are in high school or, or when you first started to draw, you were told to hold your drawing up in the mirror. It's exactly like that, except you can, you can flip the, the canvas. Uh, you can bind it to a hotkey as well. And there's a boba. What's up, dude? Hey, dude, he's like, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Just the internet, buddy. Just the internet. So, we have this really dorky looking skull. Um, same kind of thing that we, we, we've done, we did over here. We want a local color. So you, you basically can set a, uh, a value lay a value down here, and I'm using just kind of the same, I just sampled this, this the value that we had here in, this, in the, the eye socket, and because my flow is set to like 76%, what that means, flow, means how loaded your brush is, like how much paint you've, you, you've let the bristles soak up, right? Whether it's watercolor or gouache or, or acrylic or oil, you know, it's how much paint is inside of that brush, and um, you can, the, if you want less paint to be in the brush, but still have the same value, you know, you just have to put down a couple more strokes, kind of like you're painting with a drier brush, you just lower the flow, right? You just lower the flow. Opacity will directly change the value that you can put down with the hardest pressure, right? So if you're painting with black, real quick, I guess we can do this. If you're painting with pure black, and you have it set to 100%, and I'm pressing on my Cintiq as hard as I can, I got the purest of that value, the highest, or the darkest in this case, range for it. Now if I didn't press this hard, you can see I can get kind of a gray tone here. That's the lightest value there. So if I were to lower this by like 50%, 55 in this case, and press as hard as I can, see see the difference there, that gray value? And I would have to lift up my brush and then go back probably a couple times here to get to that same value. So that's the difference with that. And let's go back to 100%. Let's lower the flow down to like 30%. I can still get black. It's just that less paint's coming out all at once. So it's, in another word, uh, in other words, it's kind of like another pressure sensitivity setting that you can, you can adjust on the fly because there's certain brushes that work mechanically uh, different. Maybe not mechanically, but they just have a different feel to them. Um, what are you doing, Boba? So yeah, with that in mind, that's put up to 50. It really doesn't matter. As far as like Photoshop goes, these numbers don't matter. It's what you're trying to do. There is no one way to, to kind of, you know, so what brush size would I use to, to paint a nose? You know, it's however big that nose is and however big you want the lines to be, right? That's what you kind of need. Uh, so I could also be using a multiply layer to, 
to darken these values as well. So if we just put a multiply layer here, you know, same kind of thing is happening, except we will still see the lines through it, right? Because those lines are darker than the gray that we have there, therefore making them, well, just darker in general. So, um, so there's our local color real quick uh, for this guy and his weird shaped head. I guess we're trying to edit that real quick here. His weird shaped head. Again, reference is extremely useful, but I'm not using it because I'm a hypocrite. Maybe, maybe that's fine like that. Maybe we'll just we'll just ignore it. Totally not ignoring it. Having a hard time ignoring it. All right. So again, you know, we came from a uh, a drawing, really quick kind of drawing here. We can add in our darker values. That's usually what I start with. A lot of people tend to, um, you know, start darker and then work their way up. I like to start mid-tone, work my way darker, and then add the lighting on top of that. So let's, let's do this. Let's do, let's do just that. So I'm gonna fill this in a little bit more. Around here, clean up those edges still. How, how's it look if we flip it again? See that kind of wonky head feels like it's, it's leaning. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Either way. I guess we can like, give him some kind of ear real quick here. And I'm constantly hitting Alt. That you might hear that on, on my keyboard. Alt will sample a new value, right? So you don't always have to open up your mixer or your your, your swatches or whatever. Um, you can just hit Alt and select one of the values that you already have down, and maybe. And that's what that's where a lot of my new values come from because I'm mixing on canvas, right? I'm resampling. Just my thumb is resting right on Alt. Um, I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger and creepy. So, I'm still working on one layer. I could be working on a mask layer. Again, holding down Alt in between these two layers, you can get this kind of effect. This way, I can I can work with a larger brush. That's weird. What, that, what just happened there? Is this an eraser? I don't understand what's happening. This is this is new. What setting is that? Normal. Flow is at 50. This is really interesting. Oh, you know what it is? Because this isn't opaque. If I if I paint on normal here, under if I were to make a layer underneath this, hold on, Photoshop. Make a new layer underneath that head. That's right. So the the reason why that's happening, I would have to first merge visible. Make it a, a, a flattened. Uh, version of this, and then we would have to basically cut this out of this flattened version. We can do that real quick here. The lasso tool. Hold it down shift while using the lasso tool will allow you to add more selections to it. Holding the alt will allow you to take some away. So we'll do this real quick as well. Okay, so there's that. We can invert the selection, control shift I. And hit delete and now you can go ahead and click that onto there and that should yeah there we go so now we still have the same edge and that's what we did with the uh with the spheres right you know the the base layer here is completely opaque completely 100 percent solid so you can't see any values underneath that if it wasn't you would you'd be able to have that trans uh translucent transparent kind of effect um, which is what we were having earlier with this with this head, right? You can actually even see it where the transparent areas are, and that's how clipping masks work. They won't the transparency of your base layer will carry through, right? It'll it'll carry through to you know the layers that you put on top of it. So they won't make that area darker until the base layer is. It's kind of I don't know if that's if I'm doing a decent job explaining that, but um, hopefully. Um, 
so yeah, and then you can you can go ahead and start painting using the uh, the clipping mask type of setup, making some values darker, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, keeping in mind of the planes of the head as well. I, again, I usually start mid tone and then slowly work my way dark, uh, and then kind of flip the the switch on it and then go to working light, right? And going to work light also includes the, the ambient reflection. You know, that from either the sky, if, the, if your character's outside, or, you know, maybe he's in a, a pretty brightly lit room. Um, you know, there's other, other sources of light coming in to affect. Um, yeah. So the cheekbone, nose, jaw, chin. You know, just quickly laying it in. This would be after a lot more rendering, uh, honestly, for the other values that we just put down. Probably have the nose a little bit more figured out as well. The eyes, you know, the jaw. Um, and get the cast shadows figured out too. And I guess we can come over here, sample the background. <laughs> this face. Um, so messed up. He's got like skin, I guess, on him too. His teeth. You know, again, having a skull to observe would be so good be so good and helpful and whatever it is you're trying to paint you know if, if it's um, if it already exists in real life you know try finding that man don't do what I'm doing right here at some point I would like to make a, a better video than this for this kind of example um, and then you can go ahead and merge these together when you're kind of confident with them and you can always the shitty thing about like the, the layer masking and defining you know your edges I guess it's not it's not shitty it really isn't it's um, I guess it really depends on the brushes that you're using for your your um, your bottom layer. I find that, especially when I'm trying to make something opaque, the brush that I use, I usually just use the, the digital round and I turn off the transfer, right? Hit F5 by default, turning off your transfer. That's the difference between making something that'll have transparent, you know, uh, um, transparency and not, whether it's just you're painting full-on opaque like a marker, like a black marker or something, would be the equivalent right there. Or kind of something like digital, that where you have uh, different value ranges just in one brush stroke. So some reflecting light coming back in here. Orbital muscles. You know, whatever you want. However you want to light it. I guess that's kind of up to you, right? So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like that's that's about all I do. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, you can email me at John Derek Murphy. No, that's my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter, John Derek Murphy at gmail.com. Uh, any questions at all? Uh, maybe something you'd like to see. Um, I do stream over on Twitch Monday through Friday, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so go over to twitch.tv slash John Derek Murphy, hit the follow button, subscribe here. Again, follow me on Twitter at John Derek Murphy. And you know, we can we can make some more of these videos and cover something a little bit more extensive than than just this type of stuff too. Um Right, Boba? Boba's just hanging out. He's just hanging out. Alright guys. Peace. Love and hugs, and uh, I'll catch you next time.